Hello, my name is Rituparna Ghosh and I welcome you to Golpo, my storytelling podcast where I share stories that have picked me. Yes, stories really choose me. These are stories that I love to perform, read out and tell every now and then in my workshops and performances. Is this a podcast for children or adults? If you have a heart beating for stories, then this one is for you. So sit back and listen. Let the story choose you. Some months back, my son returned from school with a question. Mama, why do we live in a rented house? My friend says we should own a house. This question from my son came to me like a rapid volley. We We have have never devalued our home. And I always felt that my son who loves spending time in ours would take pride in it. But then living in a metropolitan city where you are judged by the size of your house, maybe this warrants as a topic of discussion for seven-year-olds. I wouldn't know, of course, since I grew up in a rented house far away in a small town where homes were all about warmth, love, friendship and memories. So this got me thinking. Is it important to own a house? Have humans always lived in houses? Why and how did humans build houses? And to address these questions, I will share two legends with you today. My first story is a Zamibian legend. So here we go. Why people began to live in houses. The people of Central and Southern Africa believe in the great sky god, Leza. Once Leza called a honeybird and gave it three kalabalashes. Now, for those of you who don't know what is a kalabalash, it is the African name for what in India we called the bottle gourd. So Leza gave the honeybird three kalabalashes. All three of them closed at both ends. To the bird, he said, take these to the humans. Two of them contain seeds, but this third one must not be opened. Tell them they mustn't open it until I tell them to. The honeybird puffed itself up and carried the kalabalashes all the way from heaven to earth. But on its way, it kept thinking of the third kalabalash. What did it contain? What was so secret that Leza had forbidden humans from opening it? The honeybird kept flying, but with every flap of its wing, it became more and more curious. Finally, unable to control its curiosity, the bird opened the kalabalashes. The first two had the seeds, just as Leza had said. But the third kalabalash was a trap house. It had locked in death, disease, sickness, dangerous animals, creepy reptiles, and poisonous insects. The honeybird flitted around the kalabalash, wondering what it could do. The third kalabalash seemed bottomless. Destruction, death and despair crept out of it. Up in the sky, Leza saw that the kalabalash had been opened. Leza flew down to earth himself to stop the mayhem and close the trap door once again. But no matter how hard they tried, Leza and the honeybird could not capture the animals and reptiles. Suddenly, the earth was a different place for humans. During the day, men and women had to tread carefully, for dangerous animals prowled everywhere. The night was even more dangerous, for there were snakes and other reptiles crawling all over them. The people realized that there was no escaping death or illness. And so from then on, men and women began to build shelters to live in them and protect themselves from the elements of nature. The summer is fast approaching. And while we live in the shade and comfort of our air-conditioned and air-cooled homes, Spare a thought for the thousands of people who live in rudimentary houses across the country. 
Do you think they've been able to secure shelters to protect themselves from the harshness of the sun? That's for you to see and ponder. Moving on, my next story is a Santhali legend. For those of you who don't know, Santhals are an Indian tribe living in the forests of Bengal, Orissa and my home state, Jharkhand. So here we go. This one's called The First House. A long time ago, people had been savaged by nature's elements. They faced harsh winds, pelting rain, scorching sunlight, battled with fierce animals to stay alive and strong. But this battle for survival was a difficult one. So one day, two friends decided to find a solution. They decided to build a house. But where could they begin? There were no houses that they could see and copy. So the two friends decided to take help from the animals. They went to the mighty elephant and asked for advice. We want to build a house for humans. The first house for humans. Where do we start? The elephant pondered over the question deeply and said, Begin with four pillars, as long and thick as my four legs. But don't ask me what to do next because I have no idea. The two friends did as they were told. They built four strong pillars and stopped. Their house had just started to take shape. Next, they went to the snake and said, We want to build a house for humans. The first house. The elephant suggested we build four strong pillars. But he couldn't tell us what to do next. Could you help us? The snake pondered over the question gravely and then said, Cut poles as long and thin as myself and lay it above the pillars. But don't ask me what to do next because I have no idea. The two friends did exactly as told and stopped. Their house was far from finished. They went out again. And this time, they found a she-buffalo watching over the carcass of her dead husband. The friends told her about the house they were building for humans. They told her all about the pillars and the poles and asked for her piece of advice. The she-buffalo looked down and said, You see the skeleton of this dead buffalo? You must make a roof like that. But don't ask me what to do next because... I too have no idea. The two friends did exactly as told and stopped again. Their house was still missing something. Tired and exhausted, the two friends went to the river for a dip and a wash. They spoke to the fish about the house they were building. The fish swam around them thinking about the house for humans and then said, See the scales on us? You must cover the roof with dry leaves, one above the other, just like our scales. The two friends were thrilled. They rushed back, gathering dry leaves along the way. They did exactly what the fish had asked them to do. And now the first house was ready. What is your house made of? Walls, furniture, objects, cars, books, toys, clothes... Or is it built with people, love, memories and the life that you live within those walls? Go back to your elders and ask them about their memories of their childhood homes. Chances are that you would visit a home very different from your own. If you have a story about your house and what it is made of, then write to me. Until next time, happy storytelling. for listening. Golpo is a storytelling podcast with stories in English, Hindi and Bangla. If you enjoy the story and the podcast, drop me a line at contact at yourstorybag.com. Until next time, happy storytelling. Mm-hmm.